Hey guys and welcome to round 1 of the playoffs of the P4G The Next Generation. So last week there wasn't a video so let me explain it for a bit. So yeah last week um, we had to face Elblitz Teemo and his California cast forms. Um, so yeah we started to uh, we started our battle I mean and everything went right. Um, but after about 40 minutes or something we DC'd so yeah, it really sucked um, because we were already so far into the match. We both had 3 months left. Um, and yeah, we co uh, both couldn't really remember each turn anymore. Um, so yeah, we tried to recreate the battle, um, but then it DC'd again. And so yeah, we were both really annoyed by this. And yeah, in the end, Timo decided to forfeit the match. So yeah, we got the win by forfeit. And that really sucked because it was really a good battle. It just was such a good battle. And yeah, not being able to upload it uh, just sucks. But yeah, unfortunately things had to happen this way. Uh, we ended the season with a 9-2 record and secured the second place in the league, which is just really mind-blowing to me. I never expected to, to make playoffs, let alone finish second place, especially since this is, well, pretty much my first draft league uh, uh, ever. I mean, I am in the UCL, um, but those two, the uh, UCL and the P4G kind of started at the same time, so yeah. I pretty much have no draft league experience at all and just making it to the playoffs is just really amazing. But yeah, now that we reach playoffs, I'm definitely going for the title of champion. However, in this round though, we have to face Panther 2 and his California Clefables. And Panther is a really good battler. He's been in numerous of leagues, um, so definitely go check him out. Uh, we haven't actually faced Panther before yet in this season, um, so that makes this matchup even harder because I really don't know what to expect. But what makes this even harder is his amazing draft really. He has just such a good team. Uh, I really struggled prepping a team for this match because of how good his team is really. But yeah, let's have a look at his team. Starting off is Terrakian. Uh, that thing is just such a powerful man. It hits so hard. Uh, close combat, Stone Edge. It's a stealth rocker. It's most often seen scarfed or bended. But it also gets SD and rock polish. So the double dance set. And yeah, it pretty much hits my entire team. I don't have a lot of switchings for it. So yeah, it's a definite bring. But yeah, next though is Sylphian. A really good man. A really good cleric as well. I have it in the UCL. So yeah, I know how good it is. It's also a really scary specs user. Um, so yeah, that is something to keep in mind. I'm predicting this thing to come as well. Um, because uh, it takes dragon moves from Latios. And it takes very little from Psyshocks. And it also takes moves from Megalopony pretty well. A max defense Sylphian isn't to it KO'd by return from Adamant Lopony. He's got Gudra as well and that thing is actually really scary to my team um, because it gets a lot of coverage to hit my entire team really. Uh, I don't really have a good switch in, uh, to it because of that. It gets T-Bolt for Empoleon, Bane Thrower for Bisharp, Ice Beam for Gliscor, Sludge Wave for Aromatis and of course Dragon type moves. So yeah that thing is really scary. It's really bulky as well so it can be really hard to take down. Uh, coupled with an AV uh, it takes all special moves pretty much. Yeah I'm pretty sure he's gonna bring this thing against me. He's got Salazzle, um, really good matchup against me as well. Um, Fire Poison Stab is just so good. Uh, it also has the Corrosion ability which allows it to uh, poison Steel types like my Empoleon. So yeah, that is pretty annoying. Um, it also outspeeds my entire team except for Megalopony. Yeah, it's really scary. It hits my entire team as I said. So yeah, I'm pretty sure it's gonna bring this thing. Up next is Jellicent. Uh, Jellicent is a really good man. I really like Jellicent actually. However, I don't like facing it. Um, it's really bulky, it gets Recover, uh, Will-O-Wisp, Toxic, it has the Water Absorb ability, so yeah, it's a really good wall. There's definitely a good chance he will bring this thing. He's got Golurk as well, that's a pretty good man as well. It's actually pretty scary to my team because I don't really have a good switch into this thing either. Um, combination of EQ, Ice Punch, uh, Shadow Punch, pretty much hits my entire team. Yeah, even though Gordok is really slow, it has a massive attack stat and with those moves it hits my entire team as I said. So yeah, I really hope he doesn't bring this thing. Now though we get to his scariest man on his team and that is Mega Metagross. It is his ultra tier pick, um, but that thing is just a monster. It did cost him uh, 140 uh, points in his draft, but, but despite that he still has managed to uh, draft a great team. Um, but yeah, Mega Metagross, uh, there isn't a reliable switch into that thing at all on my team. Uh, he's definitely gonna bring this thing. He, he has brought it for every single uh, of his matches in this uh, in this league, I'm pretty sure. So yeah, that thing is a monster. He's gonna bring it for sure. And really hope he isn't going to destroy me with that thing. But yeah, up next is Mandibus. Uh, that thing is a really good wall. Can be both defensive and specially defensive. It is another defogger he has. Uh, has recovery in Roost. Um, gets, also gets a uh, knockoff, fall play, U-turn. 
Um, so yeah, that thing can be really annoying and hard to take down. Uh, I'm pretty sure he's gonna bring this thing as well, because Max Defense uh, Mana Bust takes pretty much nothing from Megalopony's moves. But I could also see him bring a more specially defensive set to take moves from uh, Latios. We are not sure what kind of Mana Bust he's gonna bring, but I'm pretty sure he's gonna bring it. He's got Electros as well, that thing is a really good mon. It has the Levitate ability, so because of that it doesn't have any weaknesses, which is just really cool. Uh, it's most often seen with an Assault Fest, so uh, if he's gonna bring it, I'm predicting that item. Um, and it also has a pretty decent matchup against me because of all the coverage uh, moves it gets. It gets HP Ice of course, a Flamethrower. Yeah, it can be really scary to my team. Up next is Taurus, that thing is actually pretty fast, uh, 110 so it's speed ties with Latios. And it actually can hit really hard because of its sheer force ability. Um, so yeah, I don't necessarily see it coming, but if he does bring it, it could definitely be scary to my team. And last but not least is Torterra. Um, I don't see this thing coming either, but there is a chance he might bring it because of its good defense stat and he might bring it for Lopany. Uh, he does have to watch out for Ice Punch though, so maybe not, but it is another stealth rocker he has. He also, uh, Torterra also has pretty good attack, I'm pretty sure, can hit hard with EQ or Wood Hammer. But yeah, that's it for his Pokemon. Uh, as for his Z Crystal, he has the Poisonium Z. Um, so yeah, that makes Salazzle even scarier and it can also be run on Gudra uh, with Sludge Wave or Terrakion with Poison Jab. I'm pretty sure Terrakion gets Poison Jab. But yeah, that's it for his team as I said, really scary. Um, so yeah, let's have a look at the team I brought for him. Starting off is Megalopony. Um, I needed to bring this thing because it outspeeds his entire team. Uh, he does have a couple of good switches to it like the Mandibus and the Sylveon. But once those are weakened, Lopony can definitely put in work against him. I'm bringing Return, uh, High Jump Kick, Power Up Punch and Baton Pass. Power Up Punch can be really, uh, can come in really clutch I mean. And Baton Pass is actually really nice because um, getting momentum in this uh, against him um, especially is uh, really nice because of his main uh, offensive threat. So yeah, momentum is really useful. Um, as for my EVs, I'm bringing Max Attack with an Adamant Nature to hit as hard as possible. I have enough speed to outspeed Salazzle by one point and... I put 12 in HP because, well, those were the uh, remaining EVs. So yeah, that's it for Lopany. Up next is uh, Latios. I'm bringing an Assault Vest Ladio this week. And because that way I can take moves from Salazzle better. Um, I don't really have a good switch into Salazzle on, uh, on this team. I could. Uh, I was thinking of bringing Chandelure for Salazzle, but Chandelure doesn't really do a lot in this match because of Gudra and Mandibus. So I refrained from bringing Chandelure and brought Latios instead with an Assault Vest. Uh, Draco Meteor for the Gudra and well other stuff. Psy Shock is there to hit the uh, Terrakion and well other stuff as well. Uh, Shadow Ball I'm bringing for the Metagross. I do speed tie with Metagross um, but if I win a speed tie I can uh, well hit that thing hard with the Shadow Ball and T-Bolt is there to hit the uh, Jellicent and the uh, Mandibus hard. So yeah that's it for his moves. Uh, as for Latios' EVs it's pretty much the standard set. Uh, max speed with a timid nature as I said to speed tie with Mega Meta, uh, Mega Meta Gross. And Max Patek with 4 in defense. Um, up next is Bisharp. Checkmate the Bisharp with a Lumberry actually. Um, so I wanted to bring the Lumberry because um, if he's gonna bring Jellicent I'm expecting that thing to carry the Colbert Berry to take my knockoff. So if I am facing that thing I go for the knockoff the Colbert Berry pops and he... Tries to burn me with Will-O-Wisp or maybe Scald. I do have the Lumberry and I will be able to 2-hit KO that thing. So Lumberry is there for that. Um, as for my moves, just the standard moves. Knock off, Iron Head, Sucker Punch and Sword Sense. Sucker Punch especially will be really useful against his faster mons. Well, especially the Mega Metagross. And yeah, once I get a Sword Sense up, uh, Checkmate can really put in work against him. Uh, he doesn't really have a good switch into Bisharp at all, so that is nice. As for my EVs, um, I'm bringing enough speed to... Outspeed Modest, Max Speed Gudra, I thought that would be nice for that I guess. Uh, max Attack and just like Lopany, uh, 12 in HP. So yeah, that's pretty much it for Bisharp. Up next is Empoleon. Uh, this is another thing uh, I brought to semi-switch in, uh, in against uh, Salazzle. Because Salazzle is just such a problem against my team. Um, and uh, Empoleon also switches into uh, Sylveon and Jellicent as well, so that is really nice. And I can Toxic those two. Um, so yeah, I'm bringing Toxic as I said, um, because it helps wearing down his walls like uh, Gudra, uh, Jealous and the Sylveon as I said, Mandibus, um, well those pretty much. Uh, Skull is there to burn stuff and 
uh, hit the Terrakian as well. I'm bringing Roar as well because if I am able to get up my rocks, by the way I'm carrying Stealth Rock, uh, I can maybe f uh, go for Roar on a Sylveon and just chip down his team which could be really nice. Roar is also uh, there in case uh, I'm against Terrakion and he wants to go for uh, Rock Polish or Sword Stance in my face. I can, can Roar it out and he won't be able to sweep me. Uh, leftovers and as for my EVs, max HP. Uh, almost max spadef, 236 with a calm nature in uh, spadef. And I'm bringing 20 in speed because uh, I wanted to speed creep Sylveon and Jettisant. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much it for Empoleon. Uh, up next is Jacko the Gourgeist because Gourgeist is uh, pretty much my best switching against Terrakion and Metagross. It is immune to uh, uh, Terrakion's close combat so that is nice. And it doesn't take a lot from Stone Edge. I think Stone Edge is like a... It is a 3-hit KO, I'm pretty sure, and Metagross' Ice Punch is a 3-hit KO as, uh, as well. After Leftovers, I'm never 2-hit KO'd by uh, Ice Punch, so that is really nice. Originally, I wanted to bring Gliscor, um, but because he knows I have Gliscor, I'm, f I'm pretty sure he's gonna bring Ice Punch on most of his Mons or HP Ice on like Celezzel. So yeah, I didn't want to bring Gliscor because Gliscor also gets Oko'd by Mega Metagross. So yeah, Gur guys is uh, a better switch into... Well, Metagross than Gliscor. And, and Gourgeist also functions as a switch into Terrakion just like Gliscor. So yeah, Gourgeist was all around better. As for my moves, I'm bringing Fall Play because Fall Play uh, two shots the Mega Metagross. So that is pretty cool. A Seed Bomb is there to hit the Terrakion as well as the Jellicent. And well, pretty much those two I'm pretty sure. A Will-O-Wisp is there to burn his uh, physically offensive mons like the Metagross, like the Terrakion. And Synthesis is there to gain recovery. Um, as for my EVs, I'm bringing max HP, almost max defense. Uh, I'm bringing 12 in speed um, because I wanted to... Uh, well, with this speed investment, I do outspeed non-speed invested Golurk. So that is pretty nice if he brings Glo uh, Golurk, that is. So yeah, that is for Gur, guys. I really need to keep this thing healthy in this match because otherwise uh, Terrakion can destroy me as well as Metagross. But yeah, last but not least is my circuitry, live wired circuitry. I'm bringing Scarf circuitry this week because... Um, I will outspeed this entire team aside from Scarf uh, users on his team. Uh, I'm carrying T-Bolt, Volt Switch, Dazzling Gleam and Ice, uh, Hidden Power Ice I mean. A uh, Dazzling Gleam is there specifically for the Gudra. Even though Gudra is um, Salt Fest, I'm pretty sure I will still be able to free it, KO it with Dazzling Gleam so that is nice. Um, I could be wrong though. Um, but yeah, Zerktree's main job is just to Volt Switch around and uh, weaken his team for Lopini uh, or Lali to clean up late game. So yeah, that is my plan. Um, as for my EVs, I'm bringing 84 in HP. Well, I put the remaining uh, EVs in HP and Defense and Spadef. But I put max, uh, max EVs in Spatek with a modest nature and 164 in speed. And because with this speed investment, I will be able to outspeed um, Celezzle by one point with my Choice Scarf. And I also outspeed Max uh, Max Speed Scarf Sylvian if he wants to bring that. Uh, I don't outspeed uh, Scarf Gudra though, so yeah, if he brings that, um, good for him, I guess. He got me then. Uh, but I doubt it though, I'm expecting uh, more bulky Gudra or maybe choice packs or something. But yeah, that's it for Circuitry and yeah, also pretty much it for my team. Um, so yeah, I'm really scared for this match because I really don't feel certain at all. I really struggled while prepping for this match. Um, but yeah, I'm still hoping to snack a W and, well, reach the semi-finals. So yeah, let's get right to the match. Okay, so here we are with the battle. And as you guys can see, we did battle on Showdown. And so we first played on Wi-Fi, but we had a DC, unfortunately. And because of time constraints, we agreed to have our match on Showdown instead. Um, but yeah, uh, as you guys can see, though, he brought the Mandibus, the Salazzle. The Terrakion, the Mega Metagross, the Gudra and the Sylphian. So pretty much everything I expected really. Um, he didn't bring the Jellicent or the Electros. But those were just months I could see him bring. But these were uh, pretty much the main six I was predicting. And well he did bring it. So not sure if that was something good or something bad. But either way I decided to lead off with my Xurgatry. Because uh, my plan was to weaken uh, his months with my Xurgatry's full switch for... Ladios or uh, Megalopony to clean up. So yeah, following my plan, I decided to lead off with that thing. So in comes Livewire the Xurgatry as he leads off with his Gudra. So pretty bad lead for me. I have to Volt Switch out right here. According to my damage, it seems like he's AV. So that's good to know. I go right out into my Empodian to take the Dragon Pulse or Dra Draco Meteor, which I was predicting. But he did have the Dragon Pulse. Here though, I was uh, pretty sure he was going to go for T-Bolt. But I needed to Toxic this thing because... 
I needed some, uh, to weaken this thing somehow because of uh, how big of a threat it was. So I had to take the T-Bolt unfortunately. It did 44%. Here though I go to my Latios predicting another T-Bolt. But he very nicely predicts that and goes for the Dragon Pulse instead. Which does a huge amount to my Latios. Which sucks because Latios is now very low. Here I kind of misplay. I go right for the Draco Meteor. I should have went for the Psy Shock because... Um, well, the switch into Sylveon was just so obvious. Um, the Psyshock would have been a better play, but instead I went for Draco, which is of course immune to the Sylveon. I have to switch out though, so I go into my Empoleon predicting the Hyper Voice, but he very nicely predicts that again. And doubles out into the Mega Metagross, so currently the game isn't really looking too good for me, because um, uh, I don't really have the momentum right now. Uh, he keeps making good plays and good doubles, which kind of forced me... Uh, in the corner so yeah he went into the Mega Metagross. Here though I switch out into my Gourguys to take any of its moves. Since Gourguys was my designated switch into this thing. Um, he goes for the EQ which does pretty much nothing so that is nice. I recover most of it with my leftovers. But in an attempt to gain momentum I actually double out right here. Uh, predicting the switch into one of his mons. He goes into the Gudra predicting me to go for a uh, foul player. Well whatever move Gudra was pretty much able to take it. And I... A double out right there uh, predicting his switch and I go out into my Mega Lopney. So I get my Lopney in against the Gudra which is really nice because now momentum has kind of shifted in my uh, in my favor which is nice. So now things are looking good for me. I can Mega Evolve right here. I go for the High Jump Kick to uh, well pretty much hit everything except the Sylveon. But he goes into the Mana Bus and as you guys can see High Jump Kick does pretty much nothing. And it does reveal to have the Rocky Helmet. So I have to switch out right here. I switch out into my Xerxes predicting the Roost. Um, so yeah, I, I need to get rid of its Rocky Helmet because uh, Manabus can otherwise just wall my Lopini and keep uh, chipping down on me. So I go for the full switch on his Gudra switch and I go out into the Bisharp instead, instead of the Mega Lopini because I'm predicting him to go into the Manabus right now and I want to knock off its Rocky Helmet. So that is what I do, I go for the uh, knockoff as he brings out his Manabus. So I am able to knock off its Rocky Helmet which is really nice for Lopini. Um, here I... Go for... I actually switch out into my Poseidon um, predicting, well, to take any of its moves. But he uh, doubles out right here into the Terrakion, which is really bad for me. Uh, I go into my Gourguys uh, to take any of its moves. I do fresh the Choice Scarf, which is really good to know because he actually went for the Stealth Rock. So I now know he is locked into the rocks, which is really good to know. So knowing this, I uh, can safely switch out into my Mega Lopney as he switches out into the Gudra to take a possible Seed Bomb uh, because I think he was Sap Zipper. So I get in my Mega Lopney and I can just uh, press High Jump Kick and nothing wants to take it really. So I go for the High Jump Kick, he sends in the Mana Bus. I really have to hope it, it doesn't miss and luckily it doesn't. Uh, it is now a roll to kill him but I'm willing to risk the roll. I go for item kick. I do land it and we take uh, take down the Manda bus, Which is just really nice because that thing was just a pain to deal with. Uh, he goes into the Terrakion and actually makes a really good double. As he switches out into the Salazzle predicting my Jacko. So that was a really good play. Um, here I decide to uh, sack off my Ladio since it's really low. And it doesn't really do a lot anymore since it dies to Bullet Punch from Mega Metagross. Um, Salazzle outspeeds it is, uh, if it is uh, timid. And uh, I also know right now that um, Terrakion outspeeds it because of uh, its Joy Scarf. So I decide to sack off my Latios. It takes Stealth Rocket Damage and it takes a Flamethrower as well. I actually live on 5. Um, I kind of misplay again this time, because uh, this turn I mean. Because I went for the Psy Shock, I should have went for Shadow Ball. But I really thought there was no way he was going to switch out. But I think he was actually modest. So that is why he switched out because he wouldn't be able to outspeed my Latios then. So I uh, should have went for the Shadow Ball because um, as you guys can see I win the speed tie right here and damage this thing with a Shadow Ball. So if I, went for sh if I had went for Shadow Ball early and he didn't have Bullet Punch I would have knocked out the Metagross which was just so great but unfortunately I didn't. Uh, I can get in my Xerxes right now and just go for Volt Switch. Volt, uh, Volt Switch will be able to knock out the Metagross. But he decides to go into his Gudra and Gudra is now really low after the toxic damage. I think it's at uh, 20, 26 or something. Um, or 27 apparently. I get in my uh, Lopini and I can just go for the return. I could have went for a high jump kick predicting the Metagross switch or the Terrakion. But oh, it wasn't worth the miss. Um, he gets in a Sylveon right now. I have to switch out right here. I'm not, I'm not going for the Baton Pass in case that thing is a choice carf. Uh, in case he wanted to run that. I wa uh, wasn't willing to risk that. So I go. I hard switch out into my Empoleon to... Um, 
What's it called to take the hyper voice? So Empoleon comes in, he goes for the hyper voice. It doesn't seem to be offensive because hyper voice did pretty much nothing to Empoleon. Um, so here I go for the Skull because Skull hits pretty much everything that wants to switch in and it has a chance to uh, KO the Metagross. So in comes the Metagross and unfortunately I do get a low roll. Not really a low roll but well not a high roll. And that allows the Mega Metagross to live on 2 and I unfortunately do, uh, don't get the burn either so that really sucks. Um, I actually predict him to go for the Ice Punch, predicting my Gore guys, but he just goes for the EQ and that was, uh, in my opinion, a bad play. I should have just went into my Gore guys, but I also wanted to keep Gore guys healthy because Terrakian was still there at full. Um, so yeah, losing my Empodian kind of hurt me because now I don't have a switch into um, to Sylphian as well as the Salazzle and those two can now really put in work against me. So. Yeah, and Podium goes down to the EQ for Metagross, which sucks. But I can get in my Lopni right now and pretty much hit every hit everything that wants to come in. But I go for the Return right here as he brings out the Sylphian. And Return does a really solid amount, 52%. He is out of range for a second one though. So I go for the Paton Pass on his, on his Protect. So that is really nice because now I have a, sway, a safe switch in into my Bisharp. And I can just go for the Iron Head. So that is what I do, I go for the Iron Head, but he is just able to get in his Mega Metagross to sack it off. So if I would have gotten the Skull Troll, uh, he would have had to send out his Salazzle or something. So that kind of sucked. Um, but now he gets in his Choice Cards Terrakion and he can just uh, threaten out my team. Here though I actually made a play. I was uh, I really thought the switch into uh, into Gore Guys was really obvious. So I uh, stay, decided to stay in predicting the Stone Edge and I went for Iron Head. But instead he went for uh, the switch into the Salazzle as I go for Iron Head, which does a solid amount because of the crit. Here though is another, uh, well, 50-50. I really wanted to go for the Sucker Punch because it would be able to knock out the Salazzle, but I really thought it was too obvious. Um, so I was predicting him to either switch out into the Terrakian predicting that or um, uh, go for the Nasty Plot. So instead of Sucker Punch, I went for the Knock Off because Knock Off would be able to... Uh, Knock out the Salazzle if uh, he um, if he decided to go for the Nasty Plot. And Knockoff would also knock knock off the Choice Scarf on the Tyrakian. Would, which would be really nice for the uh, Megalopni. So I went for the Knockoff. And as you guys can see, he just goes for the Flamethrower. So I made the wrong play. I should have went for Sucker Punch. Because uh, if I would, I would have went for Sucker Punch, I would have knocked out the uh, Salazzle. And things would have been really uh, looking good for me. I send out my Xerxes right here, go for the full switch as he predicts that and switches out this into his Terrakion to take that. So I'm pretty much forced to go into my uh, Gore guys because, um, well, Lopni gets outsped by it. And here um, I can just go for the Seed Bomb. Um, I'm predicting a switch into the Salazzle, but he actually switches out in his Sylphian to uh, take my Seed Bomb. And now things aren't looking good because against my um, Gore guys, he is able to wish up and I just lost my Bisharp. So... Yeah, now I really struggle in taking down the Sylphian. As predicted, he does go for the Wish, so I have to go for the T-Ball to knock it out. Um, but Sylphian just goes for the Protect right here. As I went for the T-Ball on his Protect. Um, so yeah, Sylphian is now uh, Wished up, up all to full, and that is really bad because I lost Bisharp and I can't Oko this thing anymore. I go for the T-Ball, and here Sylphian does reveal the Calm Mind, so Livefire won't be able to... Uh, well, single-handedly handle this um, Sylphian. So I'm forced to switch out into my Lopini, hoping to hit this thing on the physical side. But things aren't looking good, uh, good for me. He goes for another wish as I go for the return right here, yeah. Um, but he protects just to uh, recover again. Um, so yeah, I have to knock out the Sylphian. I have to hope for some crit. So I go for the return, hoping for a crit. And as you guys can see, I don't get the crit. I do about 50% and he knocks me out with a hyper voice. So I lose my Lopini right here. And yeah, things are, well, looking really bad for me. My only play right now is to go into my Xurgatry and hope for Thunderbolt Paras and hoping for full Paras after that. Or maybe some crits. He goes for the Protect, for, uh, well, allowing him to uh, have some more leftovers recovery, which was his best play. Um, so I go for the T-Bolt. I have to get this Para. So T-Bolt comes out. I don't get the Para. And he's able to wish up again. So yeah, things are re looking really bad for me. And yeah, I'm pretty much gonna lose this game this way. Um, so yeah, he protects again uh, to take his wish recovery. Um, so yeah, my this is pretty much my last Thunderbolt because he's pretty much go, uh, going for the Hyper Voice after this. I go for the T-Bolt, I don't get the Para and he is able to knock me out with the Hyper Voice. And 
that's pretty much game. Even if I was able to knock out the Sylvian with my Gourgeist, he would have had the Salazzo in the back to knock me out with Flamethrower. So yeah, unfortunately this is the game I do frisk his leftovers, which is pretty much useless because I already knew that. He goes for the Hyper Voice. I do live it somehow. I go for the Seed Bomb, does 22%, but now he is able to knock me out with a second Hyper Voice. So yeah, unfortunately we lose this game. And yeah, our P4G next generation round comes to an end in round 1 of the playoffs. So yeah, this was a really good game, so GG to Panther. Definitely go check out his side of the match on his channel, which is linked in the description down below. Um, but yeah, I definitely misplayed this game. Uh, the biggest misplay was definitely not going for Sucker Punch on uh, on the Salazzo with the Bisharp. Uh, I just shouldn't have sacked off Bisharp like that. In my mind, I really thought um, I could uh, I could um, afford losing uh, Bisharp because uh, Sylvian was already really low. So yeah, I thought I could handle Sylvian with my remaining months. But well, obviously I couldn't because it was able to wish up. So yeah, I really should have, have uh, should have kept Bishop around so I could touch the Sylvian because I couldn't touch it without it. So yeah, unfortunately uh, that play cost me the game. But yeah, it happens. Uh, you can learn from these things, I guess. Um, I'm just really happy with how we performed this season. We managed to reach playoffs and finish the season in second place with a 9-2 record, which was, like I said in the beginning of this video, just more than I hoped for. So yeah, before I end of this video though, first I'd like to thank Kelly, Lynx Forte and Kyle A again for inviting me into this league. It has been such an amazing experience really, I've met a lot of really cool and nice people. Um, so yeah, be sure to check out everyone's channels in the description down below. And yeah, for the last time this season of the P4G Next Gen, thanks for watching this video, be sure to leave a like if you enjoyed it, subscribe if you're new and I'll see you guys later. Bye!